In this video, we'll learn how to create pixel art in Photoshop. We'll have a look at what tools to use and how to best configure Photoshop to suit your pixel needs. Special thanks to Hans Aftun, Judaman, and Armin Nurusi for their support on Patreon. And with that, let's get painting. So first we want to set up a canvas and configure it for pixel art. To create a new canvas, we'll go File, New. We'll give it a name, say Pixel Art. We'll change the unit to pixels. And of course, this is going to depend on the dimensions of what you want to make. But remember, we can always change this later. I'm just going to set mine to 40, by 40. Let's set the resolution to 72 and we can leave all of the other settings as is. Let's hit create and we now have a new although fairly tiny canvas. To zoom in on it let's hold down alt and scroll. There we go. Our canvas is of course completely empty. That's fine but we don't have any indication of where we can paint pixels. That's why we want to set up a grid. First we want to go to view, show, then select grid and you might see some grid lines here but chances that they are way too big. To change this we'll go edit, preferences and we'll select guides, grid and slices. Here under the grid section we can configure the lines. First we want a grid line every one and then instead of inches let's select pixels and you can see it already updating in the background. You will also see that each pixel is currently subdivided by 4. We really don't need that information so let's go to subdivisions and change that to 1. Then you can set any color that you'd like here. I like the light gray. And you can even go in and change the line type. When we're happy with this we want to go under general and here we see a setting called image interpolation. By default this is set to bicubic automatic. This might sound pretty scary but really all this does is choose the technique that we want to use when scaling an image. And by default this is set to try and smooth out lines. But when working with pixel art we always want hard edges. So let's go and change this technique to nearest neighbor and we can see it also says preserve hard edges. So now when we scale up our pixel art it won't become weird and blurred. Let's select OK and that's pretty much all of the settings that we need to configure for our canvas. Now we can go to the bottom right and create a new layer. I'm just going to rename this layer to character. And now we're actually ready to start painting. And this is where a lot of Photoshop users often go wrong. Because normally in Photoshop you paint with the brush tool. That's the one over here. You can also press B in order to quick select it. But notice what happens if I try and paint with this. We get this very smooth and blurred outline. Of course sometimes this is the effect that you're going for. But again most of the time we want to paint with hard edges. So let's undo this by pressing Ctrl Z. Let's go to our brush tool and hold down this time. And you will now notice another tool here called the pencil tool. Now if we use this to draw the same line you can see that we get this very hard edge. Awesome! Just like with the brush tool we can always right click to change the size of our brush and to make it quicker to switch between sizes we can go and click on the tiny cog here and select basic brushes. It's then going to ask you if you want to replace the current brushes with the basic brushes. Here we want to select OK. And you can now see that we can quickly click on the size that we want to use. I mostly paint one pixel at a time so I'm going to select the first one. And we can now start placing pixels. However a common thing to do before painting is choosing a cool color palette. For this we'll use the color window at the top. Here we can double click on the top color in order to choose a color that we like. And there's really two ways that we can save this. One way is to hit add to swatches. We then give it a name and press OK. If we then go to the swatches palette and scroll to the bottom we can see our new color. But personally I like to have it within my canvas. So I normally just paint a pixel in the color that I'd like. A really good place to find cool color schemes is by going to color.adobe.com. You can choose a primary color and it'll then automatically generate colors to go with it. We can switch between the way that it generates these colors over here. Or we could just rely on what other people have done before us. To do that we'll go under explore and you can see a bunch of different color schemes that you can choose from. You can save these to your creative cloud account. Now I really like this sunset camping one. I can press download and log in with my Adobe ID or I can just press the title and we now hover over each color to see the color code. For my project I just want to use three simple colors, red, black and white. Of course I can't actually see the white right now. To change that I'll go to my background layer. I'll double click it to unlock it and give it a name. I'm just going to call it BG. I'll then go to the left here and hold down on the gradient tool. Instead I want to get the paint bucket tool. You can also just press G. Then we can select the color that we want our background to be. I'm just going to choose some kind of gray and let's press in the middle of our canvas. So now we have a more suitable background color. And at this point I'll just select my character level, press B to choose my pencil tool and I can start painting away. To choose one of my colors I'll simply hold down Alt and click on it. 
If you make a mistake along the way and you want to erase it, we simply need to use the eraser tool. That's that one over here, or we can simply press E. If we then right click, we can of course change the size to one. But you can see if I start to erase here, it does so gradually. That's because just like our brush and pencil, our eraser has two modes. If we go to the top, we can change the mode from brush to pencil. And now we can erase the parts that we don't want. So I'm just gonna fill in some more colors here. Alright, so he's starting to come together, but I still need to fill in these blank spaces with white. To do that, I'll hold down Alt and press on my white color. I'll then switch to the paint bucket tool by pressing G. And you can see if I try and fill out this hole now, that our white will bleed onto surrounding pixels. And that's definitely not something we want. Of course, it does this to try and avoid pixelation and ragged lines, but in pixel art, that's all we want. So we'll go up to the top here and disable anti-alias. Now you can see that I can fill out all the spaces without it bleeding onto the surroundings. You might also notice that the grid lines are suddenly very sharp. That's because if we go to view, show, you can see that we have our grid enabled, but the pixel grid is also enabled. This grid enables whenever you zoom in close enough to an image. And I personally don't like this. So I'm just gonna disable it. Of course, we can also disable our normal grid if you want to see your artwork without it. I think that looks pretty good. I'm not so sure that I like the red color though. Luckily, just like with a normal image, we can apply adjustments to our pixel art. So I can simply go into the hue and saturation here and bump up the saturation. I think that looks a lot better. We then select this layer, hold down shift and select our character as well. Let's then right click and hit merge layers to apply those changes. When working on pixel art, you often want to zoom in really far and it can be easy to lose track of your overall image. Therefore, I like to go to window, arrange and select new window for pixel art. This creates a second window showing our canvas. Right now it's hidden up here, but if we click and drag, we can place it anywhere in our interface. I'm just gonna take mine here and place it over here. And we now control the zoom level on this canvas in individually. And we can now see changes in both windows as they occur. Finally, when you're done with your artwork, we can press Ctrl-1. This will preview the canvas at a 1 to 1 pixel ratio. Of course, for pixel art, this makes it really, really small. That's fine if you want to export it to a game engine. Here you want the images to be as small as possible, because you don't want to use up any extra space. But if you want to share this online or send it to your friends, we probably want to make it a bit bigger. First, let's zoom in. With our grid enable, we'll press C in order to bring up the crop tool. And we can now crop our canvas to fit our artwork. When you're happy with the crop, simply press enter. We now disable our grid lines again. If you want, you can disable the background to make it transparent. I'm just going to leave it on. Then to size up our image, we'll go image, image size. Here we can choose the new dimensions. I'm going to select pixels and a width and height of about 256. You will notice that this blurs out our image quite a bit. That's because Photoshop once again is trying to mess with us. Under resampling, we want to change it from automatic to that's right, nearest neighbor. And voila, it's super crisp. Let's hit OK. And our image is now really large. Again, we can press Ctrl-1 to view it in one-to-one. -one. That's a lot easier to see. If we now want to export our image, we can go File, Save As. I'm going to put mine on my desktop. You can either save it as a Photoshop file if you want to keep the layers. We can save it as a JPEG for a standard image that we can easily share. Do note that JPEG doesn't include transparent backgrounds. If you want transparency, you need to select PNG. I'm just going to choose JPEG, hit Save, set the quality to maximum, and hit OK. And now on my desktop, we can see this pixel art jpeg image yay at this point it's all up to you to get creative and have fun that's pretty much it for this video i hope you found it useful most of the videos on this channel are focused around game development if you want to try making your own games i suggest starting here other than that thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video thanks to all the awesome patreon supporters who donated in october and a special thanks to Dudeman, armin hans Haftun, cole cabral superman the great james p thomas Volley, cyborg mummy jason the tito derek heemskirk faithful marify manolis nick lang aaron robert bund and peter Locke. you guys rock